It's a beautiful Sunday. Hey, welcome to Inspire Church Metro Manila Online Experience. My name is Nolan Galito, and I am the location pastor here in Metro Manila. I'm excited. I'm excited for today. Church, if, if you're part of Inspire Church, man, I, I miss you. I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm just so thankful for you. And those who are just tuning in for the first time or just visiting us online, hey, welcome. I need you to understand something. See, the Bible says this, that when we draw near to God, God draws near to us. Listen to that. When you draw near to God, God draws near to us. So you are not just watching a sermon. You're not just watching an online experience. You're not just looking on your phone or on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you are at. What's happening right now in your living room, in your home, in your bedroom, wherever you're watching, an encounter with God is about to happen. God wants to encounter you today. He wants to be with you. He wants to speak into your life. He wants to remind you how much He loves you. And so I want to encourage you right now. Let's just get in that posture of leaning in. That posture of encountering God. Just quiet down your soul right now. Put that food away. Turn off that stove real quick. <laughs> Tell the kids to watch Inspire Kids online. Get your Bibles, get your notebook. It's just you and God right now. Because I know He has a word for you. You ready, church? So let's pray together. Would you just close your eyes right now and, and pray with me? Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God that this crisis did not surprise you. That the issues going on in life do not scare you. And so we draw close to you. We ask you right now, wherever we are at, would you manifest your presence with us? Holy Spirit, would you begin to speak into every area of our lives? Would you begin to reveal areas in our hearts that needs to be surrendered to you? Would you begin to bless those we are sitting with, those we are living with, those in our homes? And maybe you're over there and you're not really watching, but you're hearing. Holy Spirit, would you begin to speak to them right now also? It's not by coincidence, but it's by your plan. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak through me. Thank you for this technology. Lord, have your way. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says amen, amen, amen. Wherever you're at, come on, give God a praise in that place. Give some elbow bumps to your neighbor right now. Hey, God is good. It's awesome, it's awesome. I don't know where you're watching from, but if you have been watching or if you are part of or in the Philippines, we've been in enhanced quarantine for about a month now. That's one month inside our home, one month 24-7 with the same people, and it's going to extend for a couple of more weeks. And I, I know, I know. Sometimes it feels like, man, when is this going to end? Is this going to get over? What's happening? Hey, church, don't lose hope. God is in it. God is going to make good out of it. Keep praying. Keep seeking God. And I know, I know he's going to strengthen us. But what I want to talk about today, this time that we have this afternoon, quarantine has been very interesting. Come on now, right? I mean, enhanced quarantine, being limited to your space, being limited to your area. It's been crazy at times. Especially if you live in a large household in a small space. Come on now. Don't look at anybody, but come on, right? Like, it seems like 
while we are in enhanced quarantine, <laughs> that we are even facing enhanced challenges. Come on, right? There might be challenges in your life right now, just staying at home. There's challenges that you are experiencing, challenges with your finances, challenges with your relationships, challenges with your, your marriage, challenges with your children. How about this? Challenges with your mental health or just challenges in your family. But today, today, I want you to understand that challenges, especially during this time of crisis, is normal. And I don't want to talk about the challenges because there's something at times that can come and it might disguise itself as challenges. But in actuality, it wants to bring more havoc. It wants to bring lasting problems. See, today, I don't want to talk about challenges. Today, I want to confront opposition. There's a difference between challenges and opposition. See, challenges, listen to me, challenges will test you. Opposition will try to break you. Oh, that's good right there. So challenges in life are going to test you and want to strengthen you and want to grow you. But opposition in life will try to break you. It will try to destroy you. It will try to hurt you. And so we got to understand that there is opposition in our life. Let me read you a couple of scriptures and to deal with who, who is this opposition? What is this opposition? 1 Peter 5, verse 8 to 9 says, Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, listen to me, your enemy, who's the enemy? Your enemy, the devil, ooh, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So the Bible says that the devil is your opposition. He's coming like a lion, prowling, trying to take you out, trying to break you, trying to break your marriage, trying to break your kids, trying to break your peace. In John 10.10, 10, it even says this, that the thief, the devil, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus has come that he may have, that you may have life and have it to the full. What am I getting at? Could it be, listen to me, while you are in enhanced quarantine, while you are in your house, could it be the discouragement that you're feeling? It's not just a challenge. Could it be it might be opposition? Could it be that argument that you just had with a family member, with your spouse, with your kids? Could it be it's not just because of the quarantine? Could it be because there's an enemy trying to break you? Could it be that your kids who are acting up and all of a sudden they used to be, you know, just normal, but now they're, there's just something wrong? Could it be it's not because of cabin fever? Could it be because there is a devil trying to kill, steal, and destroy? See, the Bible says in James 4, 7 that we must resist the devil. Come on now, I want you to say resist. Ready? One, two, three. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. My goal today, my job today is this, that you find freedom. And many of you will find freedom when you resist when you fight the devil, when you say no to the opposition, when you say, no, I'm not going to let this drama continue. No, I'm not going to let this discouragement continue. No, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let these arguments continue. I'm going to fight the enemy. You guys good? We got to fight. See, the title of this message and the title that I want to share with you. So if you got your Bibles, get ready, got your notebooks, get your pens. This is the title I want you to write down, all right? The title of this message, I, I like this title. My wife said it's a good title. Hopefully you guys like it too. The title of this message is The Art of War, Watch That Sneak Attack. The Art of War, Watch That Sneak Attack. 
sneak attack. I got, I got three pets. Five if you count my kids. <laughs> I got three pets. I got a zoo in my house, right? I've been talking about my pets because I'm with them all the time. And so I got a fish. His name is Kobe. Pray for him. He's not doing so well. He's just, you know, he's been with us for one year now. Josh's mom, right? Your mom gave it to my son. He's been good. Pray for him. And I got a dog named uh, Miles, and I got a cat named Caleb. And they're crazy. They love to play all the time. And it's funny the way they play. It's, it's funny the way uh, animals play. So I always play with them. I like to play with them rough, you know. And my dog, Miles, this is the way he, he, he fights, right? My dog, Miles, when you're like, all right, let's play, right? And, and you get aggressive with him, he will just charge at you. He'll just go, and he'll, he'll just charge at you, play bite, you know, bite your hand. He'll just charge at you. But my, my cat, Caleb, oh, he's a sneaky cat. <laughs> I, I don't even want to play with Caleb at times, but he, he takes the initiative. And I know when he wants to play because he'll just come around the corner, and I might be a couple of meters away, and he'll just look at me, right? He'll look at me. And if he looks at me, I know he wants to engage in a battle already, right? And so this, he's so funny. If I stare at him, he doesn't move. He'll just be like, <laughs> like I'll look at him, he'll look at me. The moment I turn my back, He's already sneaking his way towards me. And I, I, I joke around because I'll turn my back and immediately I'll look back. And he'll be in the same position. But he's moved about a meter forward. And if you're not noticing, the more you turn your back, the more you look, the closer he gets. But his position is the same. He just keeps. And by the time you turn your back and you ignore him long enough, all of a sudden... You, it's too late. You turn, he's already there, and he karate kicks, right? My dog is a karate master. <laughs> and, and, and it's crazy how my dog will just run at you and fight you. My cat, he will wait until you turn your back, and then he'll sneak attack, and he'll come after you. See, my, 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 my pets, they're not from the devil. <laughs> but their tactics, I noticed, the devil loves to use those tactics a lot. I was reading in Joshua chapter 9, and this is the main text that I want to go through. Joshua chapter 9, and Joshua is, they're in the promised land already. They've walked into the promise. And of course, they're going to experience some challenges. But they don't only experience challenges like Jericho and all of that. They experience opposition. And there are two examples of the way the opposition encounters them, is the same two ways that the devil will try to oppose you right now. It's two ways that the devil will oppose you, and you might be feeling it already. And it's found in Joshua chapter 9. It's the two ways the oppositions come at us. And so if you got your Bibles or your phones, or it's going to be on the screen also. In Joshua chapter 9, it's called the Gibeonite Deception. And it starts off with this in verse 1. Now all the kings west of the Jordan River heard about what had happened. These were the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Cellulites, Je 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 Jebusites, who lived in the hill country, in the western foothills, and along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And as far north as the Lebanon mountains, these kings combined their armies. Somebody say combined. These kings combined their armies to fight as one against Joshua and the Israelites. See, the first way the enemy attacks is an obvious way. It's a, it's a full-on frontal attack. See, Joshua and the people of Israel, they have gained ground. They have stepped into the promise. They have been achieving victories. And all of a sudden, the enemies, these other kings, unite to fight the progress of the people of God. I need you to understand when you are progressing in your relationship with God, when you are progressing in the blessings of God, when you begin to trust God with a family, when you begin to see salvation spring up, when things are going well, get ready because the enemy is going to try to bring a frontal attack. But the thing about the frontal attack is so obvious. It's what I call the perfect storm. It's when the devil overplays his hand. It's when everything happens at once, right? Right? 
Right? It, it, it's when, 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 when an unexpected bill comes, an argument with a spouse comes, your kids get sick, the lights turn off, you know what I mean? The food runs out, everything happening at once. It's so obvious. Maybe something's happening in your life and you're like, why is it all happening at once? Can I tell you? It's the enemy. And you can resist him. Don't fall for his attacks. Don't get discouraged. Fight the good fight. But that's not what I want to talk about because that's pretty obvious. You know when the enemy's coming at you, when it comes like that, when it's everything happening at once. See, the second way is the strategy that takes us out the most. It's not the front, frontal attack. It's the sneak attack. It's the Gibeonite deception. Let me explain. Verse 3. When the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they resorted to deception to save themselves. Listen to that. The Gibeonites resorted to deception. They sent ambassadors to Joshua, loading their donkeys with weathered saddlebags and old patched wineskins. They put on worn out patched sandals and ragged clothes, and the bread they took with them was dry and moldy. When they arrived at the camp of Israel at Gilgal, they told Joshua and the men of Israel, we have come from a distant land to ask you to make a peace treaty with us. So they come in there saying they came from far away when in actuality they were just neighbors. And God told Joshua, do not make any promises or covenants or, or, or anything, unions with the people around you. They are your enemy. So these guys come pretending they come from far away. The Israelites replied to these Hivites, how do we know you don't live nearby? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. They replied, we are your servants. But who are you? Joshua demanded. Where do you come from? They answered, your servants have come from a very distant country. We have heard of the might of the Lord, your God, and of all he did in Egypt. We also heard what he did to the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, King Sihon of Heshbon, King Og of Bashan. So our elders and our people instructed us, take supplies for a long journey. Go meet with the people of Israel and tell them, we are your servants. Please make a treaty with us. This bread was hot from our ovens when we left our homes. But now, as you can see, it's dry and moldy. These wineskins were new when we filled them, but now they are old and split open. Our clothing and sandals are worn out from our very long journey. So the Israelites examined their food, but they did not consider or consult the Lord. Then Joshua made a peace treaty with them and guaranteed their safety. And the leaders of the community ratified their agreement with a binding oath. Listen to me. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Kill and destroy, that's a frontal attack. It's an obvious attack. But to steal, it's deception. To steal is when you're not noticing. To steal is when you put your guard down. And I got to let you know that the Gibeonites came with deception to try to steal away the promises of God in their life. To take things that they were not supposed to have. See, the Israelites were not supposed to create any covenant with them. So they allowed them to be deceived so that they could come in. Church, I wonder if we're allowing the enemy to come in and steal some things. Steal our hope. Steal our courage. Steal our peace. See, the strategy, strategy of, a, of the sneak attack that the Gibeonites did is the same way that the devil does with us. How? He uses deception. There's a book called The Art of War by Sun Tzu, and he says, All warfare is based on deception. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When we are far away, we must make him believe we are near. What is that? I mean, that's like the tactic of the enemy. When, you, when you're not aware, that's when he comes in. Or when you are aware, he pretends to hide and, and he waits. It's deception. 
The other way is lies. They begin to lie. They say, man, no, we came from far. We're not from around here. We're not, we're not an enemy. We came from far. We're, we're, we don't live around. Look at my bread. Look at this. It's so old. And also, they brought not only lies. They didn't also only bring deception, but they brought confusion. They didn't know what to do. Should we do this? Should we, are, they, are, they, are they telling the truth? Should we invite them? What's going on? on church i need you to know that the enemy is going to try to bring deception he's going to try to bring confusion he's going to try to bring lies to try to steal from you don't let it happen be aware of it so how do you know how do you know how do you know when the opposition has come with a sneak attack how do you know when it's like my my cap calum when you turn your back all of a sudden he's slowly prowling closer to hit you how do you know? There are a couple of things that the, the Israelites started to experience that we may experience when a sneak attack opposition comes. The first one is this. Hey, write this down. When the devil begins to bring a sneak attack, number one, it makes you focus on what seems right instead of what is right. You got that? He'll make you focus on what seems right instead of what is right. In other words, he will confuse the truth with what appears to be truth. He'll make you live, listen to me, he'll make you live not by faith, but by sight. You might be living right now and all of these emotions are coming up. And, 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 and these feelings are coming up. And you're not sure, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, it feels right, or I don't know if God, I don't know, I don't know. Hey, look, I love emotions. I love feelings. I'm an emotional person. But I understand this, and I realize this, that emotions is like sandcastles. They are beautiful to look at. They are beautiful to experience. But they constantly change whenever there's a wave. Whenever a wave comes, those sandcastles don't stand. Please understand, if your faith is based on emotions, it's sinking sand. It won't hold up. We got to live by faith, not by sight. We got to trust God. We got to make sure that we are not basing life on our emotions, but basing life on the word of God. And so when, when the attack comes, make sure that you are distinguishing what, don't, 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 don't blur the lines. Don't just be like, I think it feels right. No, you better know what is right. You better trust the word of God. Read the word of God. See, the second way you know when the sneak attack comes is this, you get in your own way. Come on now. Man, I get in my own way so many times. You'll know when it's a sneak attack when you get in your own way. For example, this is one of the craziest ways that he'll get you. Just imagine you're going to run a race. You're at the starting line. The guy's over there ready. He has the gun in his hand. Once he shoots that gun, you're supposed to run. So you hear, bah! and all of a sudden, everybody runs. And now you're standing there and you're saying, is that the one? Is that the sign? Was that the signal? Am I supposed to go? They already ran. Am I supposed to run too? What, what happens? Listen, we get in our way when we become so indecisive. The Israelites started saying, wait, are they the one? Are, are, are they the enemy? Should we let them in? What should we do? I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> you ever do that? Your phrases always begin with maybe, sana, equal sure. <laughs> you know when the sneak attack comes when you're your worst enemy. You keep getting in the way. You keep being unsure. You're chasing God and then not chasing God. You're going towards God and you're not going. And, and all of a sudden, listen, worry starts coming up because you're just not sure what to do. Worry is a sustained form of fear by indecision. The more you choose not to decide to fight the enemy, the more you choose not to decide to chase after God, the more fear will enter. And the more fear enters, the more worry will come. And it will be a cycle 
of destruction because of that sneak attack. Here's another way that you know when the enemy comes. Listen to me. Here's another way. Because the, this, oh man, the, the Israelites, they fell for it. And so they began to make a vow. They said, all right, we'll let you in and we will vow to keep you. We will vow to help you. We will vow to, 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 to let you be part of our group. They created, created a vow they were never supposed to make. God said, don't make, don't make a promise with your enemies. Don't do it. But they made a vow. And unfortunately, when you read the rest of the scripture, the people started to grumble and complain and say, why did we do this? We've been deceived. These are our enemies. But they had to live with their vow. You might be wondering, what does that have to do with me? I'm not making a vow with anybody. I'm not making a vow with another nation. I'm not making a vow. What's going on? See, the thing is, when we are being attacked with a sneak attack, when we are being attacked behind the scenes, when we are being attacked by the devil, you know one of the greatest signs is? You begin to make vows. How does that sound? You ever say things like this? I'll never be good enough. I'll never amount to anything. It'll always be like this. It, why is it always like My marriage is always like this. You're always like that. I'm always like this. It's, it's never going to change. It's, it, whenever you begin to use, it's always. It's never. It's, what, what are you doing? You're using. You're saying vows. You're speaking vows over yourself. And when you speak those vows, you are blocking the promises of God. And you are, you are hurting yourself. You could start playing. And what happens is, Joshua made vows. I wonder if you're making vows during this quarantine. I wonder if you've been making promises that are destructive. I'll never talk to them again. I'll never forgive them. My life is always going to be like this. Nito talaga sa Pilipinas, mahirap. Lagi ganito. Listen, those are, not, those are not promises from God. Those are attacks from the opposition, from the enemy. I don't know where you're at. Listen to me, church. I know it's been tough. And I know it's been hard. And I know there's been challenges. But challenges are there to strengthen you. To test you. What I want to help you today is get rid of those oppositions because those oppositions have only one purpose. It's to, it's to try to break you. See, th this could have all been prevented if Joshua and the Israelites did one thing. They created a vow that lasted forever because of one reason in verse 14 it says they did not consult the Lord they didn't <laughs> they didn't ask God they tried to figure it out on their own is this the right thing to do? Should I quit my job? Should I, should I leave this relationship? I'm not really sure. Should I speak to them? Should I, should I uh, 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 encounter them? Should I, should, what, what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? They were trying to figure it out themselves when all they had to do, listen, listen, all you have to do, all I have to do, all we got to do is consult the Lord. God, I don't know. Help me, God. I'm speaking to you right now. You felt that in your soul. Cry out to God. 
Look, look, just look at me right now. Don't worry about the people you're sitting next to. Don't worry about it. Stop, stop. I'm talking to you, right? They don't see you. They can't see you. God knows the pressure you're feeling. He's never going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's calling out to you. See, this enhanced quarantine is good and bad. It's good when you allow it to be a time to grow. It's bad when you allow it to be a time to increase your gap from God. Use this time to seek God. Use this time to consult God. You might be saying, Pastor, I, I, I want to, but I just don't know how. Look, look. I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to make it easy for you, all right? How do you seek the Lord? Number one, make it a daily discipline. Psalm 105 verse 4 says, Search for the Lord and for His strength. Continually seek Him. Look, don't just seek Him once. Don't just seek Him when, it, when it's so super overwhelming. Continually seek Him. Make it a daily discipline. Psalm 5 verse 3 says, Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and I wait expectantly. Here David says, I go to you every morning. Not maybe when I wake up early. Not maybe when I got time. He says, I go to you every morning. I don't, I'm not saying go to God in the morning, but I'm saying go to God every single day. Make it a daily discipline. Pick a time. Pick a day. Because a day, listen, listen, listen. A daily discipline can determine if you are dulling or sharpening. It could determine if you are coping or numbing. I got nothing wrong with Netflix binging or eating or just lounging. I do it. It, it, it helps me. <laughs> Relax. But if it begins to numb you or to dull you, then you've been running to the wrong thing. Make it a daily discipline. Seek God. Sharpen your faith. Sharpen your hope. Sharpen your dreams. Believe again. Dream again. Seek again. Second one is this. Get familiar with His voice. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles twenty two nineteen, Now seek the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Get familiar with His voice. Know who's His voice. My, my wife can spot my kid's voice instantly. She goes, oh, I know who that is. If, if there was a thousand kids calling out at the same time, she'll know who her kid is. <laughs> She's so familiar with her voice. How familiar, familiar are you with the voice of God? Mind and heart and soul. Learn his voice. God, I need direction. Direction comes when you know his voice. God, I need help. Help knows when you know his voice. God, what do I do? Answers come when you know his voice. You know this scripture. Maybe you don't, but it's found in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. It's not I think I got plans for you. It's not maybe I got plans for you. It's not, hey, let me check what my plans are for you. He says, I know, I know, I know, I know the plans. I know the plans. And so when you are saying, God, I don't know about my marriage, God says, I know. When I don't know about my finances, God says, I know. I don't know about my children, God says, I know. I don't know about my future, God says, I know. When you begin to think, I don't know, God says, listen to my voice not your voice not the voice of the opposition not the voice of things going on not the voice of this crisis because my voice says I know the plans I have for you freedom right now Holy Spirit bring hope right now God knows he knows the plan So it's not just about resisting the devil. But it's about submitting yourselves to God. 
Make it a daily discipline. Get familiar with His voice. And the last one is this. Position yourself for His presence. Right now, you're positioning yourself. But I got to let you know. There's an assumption that when you position yourself in His presence, peace comes automatically. Not always. You know what comes automatically? Sight. Because sometimes before the peace, you begin to see the things that, are be, that have been blocking the peace. Ooh. And so before the peace, God begins to show you the areas that he brings that are blocking, the awareness that you got to fix. So what do you got to do? You got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight. Stop fighting with your spouse. You got to fight against the opposition. Stop fighting against your kids. You got to fight against the opposition. Stop fighting against your family members. You got to fight against the opposition. We don't, get, we don't battle with flesh and blood. We battle against the devil, the principalities of this world. So church, position yourself for a fight. Position yourself for the presence. Position yourself for the peace. Look, God is with you during this crisis. Hear his voice. Make it a daily discipline. Position yourself. The greatest promise is this. God is speaking to you. Right now, just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes wherever you're at. Just quiet down your soul. Don't be embarrassed. Find that courage. Close one eye. <laughs> but just hear God right now because God wants, I, I want you to know his voice. And he's saying this. If you seek me, you will find me. Whoever draws near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Listen to this. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. So Jesus is saying, if you seek him, you will find him. The greatest reward is not more money. The greatest reward is not a bigger place. The greatest reward is not another physical relationship. The greatest reward is knowing that Jesus is for you and he is with you. So wherever you're at, whatever country you're viewing this, if you hear my voice, even you, Lola, I know, I know you've been listening, pretending you're not watching. I know you've been listening. Tito, I know you've been listening also. And you've sensed it in your heart. God wants a relationship with you. So how do you do it? You might be saying, but I'm not good enough. Do I got to fix my life? Do I got to stop doing all of this? No, 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 no. I didn't say, God didn't say, fix your life, then seek me. He said, seek me. Just call out to him right now. Ready? It's as easy as that to start your journey, to surrender your life to Jesus. Yeah, it's as easy as that. So this is what I'm going to do. Listen to the sound of my voice on the count of three. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say one, two, three. When I count to three, I want you to find the courage right now to receive Jesus into your life. To so just say, Jesus, I want you as my Lord and my Savior. When you do that, he'll forgive you of all your sins. Yep, everyone. He'll give you a plan and a purpose, even in this time. And you'll be confident that you're, you will go to heaven. You got to receive and believe him. You ready? On the count of three, I want you to receive Jesus. And would you do me a favor? I want you to have the courage 
can just maybe raise your hand. You don't got to raise it real high if you want. Or victory, yes. Maybe just a little bit. You ready? Here we go. One. Two. Three. Come on now. Go raise your hand. Raise your hand. Receive them. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. I believe it. Beautiful. I see you. I know I don't see you physically, but I see you in the spirit. Beautiful. Best decision of your life. Yeah, you too. Come on, raise it, raise it. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Would you say this prayer with me? Would you say, repeat after me. Would you say, Jesus, thank you that you know everything I've been going through. Forgive me for trying to figure it out all by myself. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I surrender my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Awesome, awesome. Beautiful. Hey, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, in, I'm encouraged. I'm cheering you on. <laughs> and so right now, wherever you're at, if you have full screen on your Facebook or on your YouTube, just decrease that full screen. And I want you to go to the chat room right now. Wherever, just put right there in the chat. Say, I raised my hand. If you're watching and, and you're not on the chat, but one of your nephews or, or your kids are in the chat, would you just take that computer from them and say, I'm on the, I, I raised my hand. Hey, I raised my hand. Tell them, they're going to be encouraged. Tell them, I raised my hand. Just type it wherever you're at. I, I raised my hand. <laughs> and if you can't get to a computer right now, later on, go to inspiremetro.live. Click next steps. Let us know. Because we want to help you on this journey. You don't got to do this alone. We love you. God bless you. Continue to seek God because He's there. God bless.